Let's continue the playlist on physiology. In the previous video, we've talked about the cell membrane. Today, let's talk about the nucleus, the control center of your cell. So let's get started. We have talked about cell organelles before. The mitochondria is the powerhouse. The lysosome is the soldier. The endosome is the delivery guy. Endoplasmic reticulum, depends. Rough endoplasmic reticulum is the translator and the uber. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is the donut. Golgi is the sorter. Peroxisomes is the gym trainer. Less than 500 years ago, a guy named Anthony van Leeuwenhoek discovered a lumen at the center of the cell. He called it a nut, or a carrion, or a nucleus. Nucleus literally means kernel, seed, or a nut. In Greek, it's called carrion. So, how about karyo lysis? Karyo means nucleus, lysis means like destruction or dissolution. So karyolysis, destroy the nucleus. The nucleus is the largest organelle in animal cells. It's the control center. It contains the genetic material in the form of DNA. DNA is packed together in the form of chromosomes. Surrounded by a membrane called a nuclear membrane, it has pores to allow passage of substances. It maintains the integrity of genes because genes are parts of DNA. They contain viscous liquid called the nucleoplasm or the karyolymph, which is the substance of the nucleus. The nuclear membrane is an envelope surrounding the nucleus. It's a double membrane because any membrane in your body is a double membrane. So it has an outer membrane, inner membrane, and an intermembrane space called the perinuclear space. It maintains the internal environment of the nucleus. How? By separating the nucleus from the cytoplasm. Cool. It has membrane pores, again, for selective exchange. Molecules and ions. Molecules are big, they need carrier proteins. Ions are small, they can just diffuse. The outer membrane is continuous with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And it's studded with the ribosome, same as with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here is your amazing encyclopedia of your cell called the DNA, in form of a double helix, okay? So this is when you unpack it, but when you pack it, it's like it's surrounding histones, which they wrap around them, and then they form this chromatin, and then they form the chromosomes. How many chromosomes do we have in our somatic cells? 46. DNA transcription means DNA into RNA, especially mRNA. The mRNA exits a nucleus through the, the pores, and then in the cytoplasm, it gets translated into proteins. That's why DNA helps or codes for protein synthesis. How about the nucleolus? Nucleolus literally means a small nucleus. It occupies around a quarter of the nucleus. It appears darker under the microscope, but it doesn't have a membrane around it. There is no such thing as a nucleolar membrane. It doesn't exist. The function of the nucleolus, assembly of ribosomes and synthesis of RNA. The nucleolus enlarges when the cell is synthesizing proteins. It's active now. It's the same thing as your skin getting darker while having sex. Same idea. You're more active then. The nuclear matrix or the substance of the nucleus itself provides support and it includes something called the nuclear lamina, a subtype of intermediate filaments which I've talked about in a previous video. The vast majority of cells in your body have one nucleus. However, there are exceptions. Red blood cells, for example, have zero. Not any red blood cell, that mature red blood cell. Very nice. Osteoclasts or bone, one of the bone cells, they have multiple nuclei. In white blood cells, the nucleus may be segmented or lobated, called the bilobed, trilobed, whatever. This is a segmented neutrophil. The main function of pores are passage of large molecules, because small molecules are ion, they can just diffuse. In the next video, we're going to talk about the nucleolus. Until then, don't forget to subscribe and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy and study hard.